Well, welcome everybody. Um, thanks for coming to this very quick presentation. It's going to take the form of um, some slideware and um, drilling down into a, a demonstration that, if the gods are with me, will go well. So I'm Simon Briggs from Sousa. You probably tell my French isn't tremendous, so I'm speaking English and I'm from the UK. And part of my job is to help talk to people about what we do with open source and how we make it um, powerful in the industry. Um, so essentially, the premise we have is that by using open source within um, your, uh, at least understanding it within your architectural decisions on your um, cloud builds, um, you will hopefully keep your mind open when you're working forward. Certainly within the open source community, we do like to work together. This is also a call out to my slide where um, I use a dog and a cat because apparently that will make you a nicer audience dealing with me in the future. So the obligatory nice slides come along. Now, I'm sure you guys have all got up to the neck about cloud this, cloud that. There's a reason why we do have cloud and we think the future's cloud, particularly as SUSE working forward. Um, part of the reason is you guys are all here in Paris today, um, but the things that drive you to come here essentially are the power of what cloud can promise us. So cloud promises a break from the traditional. It promises the capability to stop being defined by the infrastructure that we previously had to use and try and work in a different model. Obviously, all the buzzwords are there, using elasticity using um, multi-tenancy um, uh, environments coming in on web services, et cetera. But ultimately, it allows us flexibility. That flexibility, we would argue, is lost if you don't remain working within an open source organization. So as I said, I'm from SUSE. SUSE have a long and proud history working with open source as a solution, um, and we um, have moved into working on the cloud in several different ways. So this is your hands up opportunity. How many people already understand what we're talking about when we say IAAS? Come on guys, help me out. I don't want to have to explain all these things. Okay, so essentially that's a brief view of where we sit in certain environments um, on the cloud. So. Um, we sit very much in the infrastructure as a service in this environment, so where we go up to hypervisor. Um, we also um, have a definition of public and private cloud. So Mexican wave, no, you're not with me. Who knows what a public and a private cloud might be? Yay, I don't have to explain these things, so it'll be quicker. So on the public cloud, SUSE do exist. Um, we're all over the public cloud available to you, and essentially we work as the OS um, in the platform that's being built out and delivered to you. And yeah, we're with all the big vendors, but uh, I seem to have noticed quite a lot of square red boxes when I've been walking around here. So we might get across that and start talking about some more interesting things to you. So um, why is open source so important to organizations when they're making architectural decisions about cloud? Essentially, um, it's the same reasons why you might have made those decisions 10 years ago, 15 years ago, to start looking at Linux. So the opportunities that abound within the open source community allow a completely different price structure, um, cost model. Um, they give you uh, the flexibility to use all different standards. And it really does genuinely avoid vendor lock-in. I'm here talking to you with a vendor's logo on here but it's the power of all open source that allows organizations to make choices which can move and be dynamic over time. Probably quite important um, in a cloud environment. Um, obviously, portability, flexibility comes along. And that in, is delivered in this particular scenario that we're talking about now is where SUSE works strongly with the open stack community. And that's why we're here today to talk to you guys. So on the right-hand side, we've worked for years now working with um, the open source community to take away some of those concerns. And if, if you were around at the time, 10 years ago, people talking about using Linux in their data centers, 
They got a bit scared. They had to be convinced that it was enterprise ready. We did that, and we're now doing it on, on the open, store, uh, open stack platform for um, the community. And essentially, we drive it through a product that I'm going to talk to called SUSE Cloud. So it's running as an infrastructure as a service platform for your architecture. And I've still left this slide in here, but actually, you can read the slide. But the example of why we work in OpenStack is exactly that out there, the fact that so many people are here today in this community working hard um, to be able to understand the opportunities the open source, open stack capability will give them, and moving forward, how it can be uh, enhanced to make even greater value for organizations. And up until now, typical use cases that have been driven by organizations have tended to err on the side of caution. So up until now, the obvious elastic workload that everyone understands to exist is the um, web farm over a holiday period, uh, a sporting event happens at a particular time, um, the great final, everyone wants information about it. Um, so we need elastic delivery of that capability for a short period, and it then shrinks back in that time. So that's what OpenStack's able to deliver. And then on top of it, we have the value that SUSE and other vendors in this market that you're talking to today are able to deliver. So sousa has got that track record we talked about earlier. And all the uh, independent hardware vendors, independent software vendor support that make sure that the applications that reside on that OpenStack cloud are fully powerful business ready. So, Part of what we do is industrialize what is the OpenStack um, platform. And essentially, this is a picture that I've not been able to refresh because it's actually um, kind of gone out of print. But the old spaghetti picture of what the different environments in OpenStack are are the complication and the thing that makes OpenStack quite a tricky customer to deliver to your, to your customers yourself or in your own environments. Um, and essentially, if I just walk through this picture, there's many moving parts. OpenStack is allowing you to um, simplify and push out solutions in an abstracted way to your customer base. But actually, inside, with you managing it as an administrator of the cloud, it is quite complicated. The orange services run, um, and they need all the elements around it. Well, SUSE has worked very hard, particularly combining Crowbar as a build um, capability to be able to take all those different parameters, take the amount of components that need to be driven, and we've changed what used to be um, something that could be done uh, only with a lot of concentration over a lot of hours, and we've reduced it right down now to deliver a fully operational, enterprise ready cloud in a couple of hours. Okay? By doing that, we've actually moved to use our infrastructure to be able to install on the left-hand side of the screen, as you will see. Um, we've also added some other elements. elements. So recently, we brought out SUSE Cloud 4. Uh, we're trying to keep up uh, with the open um, source community on this. Um, so that's based on IceHouse. Um, and we've released um, Ceph support on the infrastructure. With only 20 minutes, I haven't got enough time to show you the, info, the tool and talk deeply about Chef, but at least we brought it up there to tell you what it is. And this slide is particularly interesting. Down at the bottom, it's a different way of thinking about using storage within your distributed architecture that it's running. Very interesting project, um, and we think it's a very powerful way to go. So essentially, we've added the Ceph parts to this story. We've also worked hard around high availability. Who's seen this analogy before? Good guys, keep with me. So we've got a concept in, in cloud computing that we run cattle. So we run workloads that are really not that important to us. We don't feel a personal sense of ownership like we would for pets. Your pet, you stroke it. You give it a name, you feed it water and food, and it gets taken to the vet when it's ill. 
In the scenario we're talking about here, cattle, they get ill, you get rid of it, and you buy another cow. That's how it works. We actually argue that this is an old traditional way of looking at a brand new scenario, infrastructure as a service. We want you to move to a scenario where you want to put your pets in your cloud. You want to move away from being locked in this traditional view that it's only for the very low risk environments. And because of that, we put a lot of effort working with HA in the environment that we deliver today. And we've been able to bring that forward by using the HA capabilities SUSE is already renowned for within its SLES HA uh, modules. We are a Linux leader in this space. We use a lot of the open source technology. And it transfers brilliantly on top of the scenarios that we're talking about here. So right, yet, right now, um, we haven't quite, sorry, I'm just running forward very quickly here. We haven't quite solved the um, problem of keeping highly available virtual machines in your images running. But right now, we're able to deliver all the good value. Sorry. Do the build across all these um, services in your OpenStack environment. And that's the demonstration I'm going to show you in a second. OK, so we work across the infrastructure. If you know SUSE at all, um, we're very much best of breed. We don't try and sell a lock-in. Back to that message at the start, open source, it keeps you free. Our idea is we do what we do best, and then we allow others who are best of breed to work with us. So we're very strong about partnering. We partner with some of the largest and some of the most specialized organizations in the industry. And um, certainly, uh, we have partnership on a hypervisor level. So SUSE Cloud's the only enterprise-ready um, OpenStack production that is able to deliver hypervisors not just on Zen and KVM, but is able to deliver it out on Hyper-V um, and um, VMware as well. So that's a very strong point of our partnership. And we have several other partners, many of whom are going to work with us on our booth um, over the next few days to present to you guys the value add that they bring to our solution. Here's just a quick picture of some of those people. Always got to put logos up in a quick presentation. Um, so SUSE Cloud 4, we're going to bring out 5 reasonably soon because we're trying to follow the community by two months. So there's always a very strong drive to keep up and keep producing more code. Um, but right now, we really are, have a very powerful solution. And I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of the HA capability I built on this desktop now. OK, so um, demo time. Now, my colleague, Adam, if you saw him earlier, actually sacrificed a chicken at this point. Um, he didn't bring in a live chicken. It was paper for anyone who's concerned. Um, so let me just give you a very quick example here of uh, an environment you can't see. Uh, so give me a second. There we go. So what you're looking at here is actually the Crowbar interface to Asusa Cloud. And Crowbar is the build engine that I was talking about earlier that we use. And it's got the ability to drive out very rapidly, as I discussed, the services on the tool. I'm not here to walk you through it in detail, because I just haven't got enough time. Suffice to say, at four, just past 4 o'clock today, there's a very detailed workshop on building this thing from scratch, being able to deliver HA. That's a 90-minute workshop. If you do want to get involved in that, please go to the, booth, the, uh, the SUSE booth. Um, there's some files to collect and some infrastructure to build on your laptop that must be at least have six, 8 gig of RAM available. So if you've got that kind of kit, drive there. Um, but just to show here, I'm actually logged in over here looking at the cluster of the two control nodes. So as you can see there, um, we've got the two um, nodes that we've got listed here in our Hawk interface to describe the cluster that I've automatically built by a plugin using the Chef uh, capabilities. Um, if I now... Uh, 
go across and show you. There's also a Hawk interface on the second server. OK? Because obviously, if I kill one of my controllers and I can only see the Hawk interface on one, we might be in a little bit of trouble if I pick the wrong one. So I'll just start that up to be sure. And just to prove, um, so you can see in the background, um, this is actually a, um, a presentation of what services are running on which one of my nodes. So this is a controller one, and it's running the OpenStack um, dashboard uh, there out on um, this website up, uh, up above. And just to prove it's running, I'm using a virtual box hypervisor um, that's in that um, environment right now. So if I go across to my environment um, and forget to put it on your screen, um, which probably isn't a very good idea, okay, which one shall I choose? It's a HA environment. Obviously, I'm going to shoot one of them. Okay, I know it's prettier if I kill number one, um, so let, let's go with that. Um, so. Should we just pause or should we just completely kill it? Um, let's just kill it and see what happens. Now, if the gods are with me, as I was talking about earlier, you should uh, see some things uh, problematic. It takes a few seconds because in the background, the the actual clustering technology is working very hard, but obviously there's a 10-second refresh rate on a website, so it does demo itself very um, uh, not as quickly as it possibly can in the background. But you can see there, um, I've gone through and um, killed the infrastructure, and it's starting to rebuild the services across on the second node. So the first node was doing the majority of the work in this cluster. I've killed it, killed it dead, and we were in a recovery scenario here. Now, obviously, I've only got 2 minutes 44 left. I do want to take your questions. I haven't got much time to go into much more detail. I will be over on the stand, Susan's stand. If you want to talk in more detail about anything we talked about here, more than happy to. I do advise you, if you do get time, go along to Adam Spires and the uh, development team. Go along to their um, session around about uh, 4.15, I think, because they'll be able to work through this in detail with you, because I'm sure this has already opened a myriad of different questions in your mind. OK, so that's the end of my presentation. Just to say, in Sousa's mind, we're now setting up clouds that are on OpenStack, infrastructure as a service that we believe should be enterprise-ready and fully resilient for your organization while allowing you the flexibility of the open source choices to decide how best to do things. So is there any questions from the floor? I've still got a minute and 41 seconds to play with. OK. My, my demo went quite well. I normally have to do a little bit of fiddling somewhere. So demos always go wrong. OK then, guys, thank you very much. It's lovely to see you. Thanks for all your help. And um, we're over at the booth. Cheers.